Good evening and welcome to our winter solstice service tonight, a time to come together with you on this uh, this very special, you know, every winter solstice is special, but this one is unique in a number of ways, and many say that it it holds an energy and a promise of some really beautiful things that we're going to talk about a little bit tonight. Richard Schulman is with us on piano. Reverend Christy Corna is going to be joining. Reverend Deborah Ogiest will be joining with us. But we always begin by opening in a time of prayer. As we turn our awareness within this evening, we do so in the spirit of love and light. We give thanks that on this night, that when the sun is at the farthest distance from the Western Hemisphere, we will experience the, the least amount of light, the longest night. And yet we also know that that will surely come to pass, that it will change, that by the time the summer rolls around, we will have much more light than we do darkness. And so is the cycle and the circle of life. And this interplay of light and the, what appears to be the absence of light just teaches us how to go within, how to hibernate, how to cultivate our inner resourcefulness, how to shine and how to thrive in light or dark. And so we give thanks for this time together this evening. It came upon a midnight clear that glorious song of old from angels bending near the earth to touch their harps of gold peace on spirit will be the world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing for lo the days are by prophets seen of old when when the ever circling years shall come the time foretold when peace shall reign over all the earth, its ancient splendors bring, and the whole world will sing this special song, which now the angels sing. song is about a peace and a hope that is bigger than any day. It's bigger than any season. And so tonight we celebrate this beautiful time of solstice together. As I said earlier, every solstice is special. And a solstice such as this happens about every 20 years when two, our largest two planets, when uh, Jupiter and Saturn come closer together. But this year is called a great conjunction because this year they will come closer than they have since the year 1623 and they will be more observable than they have since the year 1226. And so I invite you go out tonight after this and just look up at the heavens to see them together. 
what astronomers and astrologers and people that study the heavens and the energies that, you know, every being has its own energy and the energies of this beautiful big planet, Saturn and Jupiter, what they bring are hope for social change and expanded spiritual consciousness. What they bring coming together is that the forms of the old will die and the growth of a new is, is supposed to be able to take place. And so I celebrate that. I think 2020 has helped all of us to a point to say, we are ready for some new things to break through. And so tonight, as we celebrate this solstice with you, I want to invite Reverend Deborah Ogist. She's going to share a little bit with you her thoughts about this special time of solstice. The winter solstice brings holiday cheer, the lengthening of darkness can be full of fear. As you open your soul, stories from the ancestors are being told. You are the power, they say. You are the love. You are the strength of the sun and the moon above. As darkness engulfs your weary blight, the peace you will gather as you rest through the nights will prepare you for your external and internal fights to bring a new dawn into the light as we go forth from this winter solstice, this magical time of the year, we enter a stage of renewal that we must hold quite near. For when we come out of the dead of night, we emerge into the world, the shining light. Let this solstice be your jump off point where you embrace the stars, where you hear the trees, where you take action from the songs of the mother's pleas to bring balance to the land, bring joy to the space, to bring love to all people of the human race. May this be a special solstice, a special, special, winter solstice for you. Deborah, what will make it special for you? To really go out into the light, to see the shining of the light from all those that have been really in the darkest in the night for the past year as we've been sequestered. And as we reach out to the light in the many, many, many different ways that we really embrace, that we are loved, and that there is a connection beyond, beyond the physical touch. That is beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. And thank you for joining me here um, for us to celebrate the solstice to eat this evening. Thank you, Deborah. I appreciate you. Thank you for inviting me. Reverend Christy Corna, our associate minister, I asked Christy if she would share a little bit about, you know, how does she relate to the winter solstice? Good evening. The holidays that we celebrate during this time, there's Hanukkah, which is a season of light. There's a Christmas, which is light and love and birth and Kwanzaa, which is all about community and unity in ideals. They all celebrate this idea of, of hope. And I think that coming through this year and the many adjustments we've had to make, uh, really leading into this, the shortest day of the year and perhaps the longest night is really reflective of the experience we may have gone through. Yet what 
I absolutely am so grateful for and appreciate is how we have stayed connected and unified and held our lanterns high for one another in consciousness and in love. There's a, a quote by Ernest Holmes that says, there is nothing to be healed, only truth to be revealed. And I believe that so much has been revealed during this, this whole year, this experience of the pandemic, all of us unifying in a new way, connecting in a new way. And as Reverend Deborah had shared, you know, there, there is a way that we can feel that unity, which is love which is our light, and find new ways to share that. And I wanted to share with you a reading. It's a uh, poem by Susan Cooper, and it's called The Shortest Day. So the shortest day came, and the year died. And everywhere down the centuries of the snow-white world came people singing, dancing, to drive the dark away. They lighted candles in the winter trees. They hung their homes with evergreen. They burned beseeching fires all night long to keep the year alive. And when the new year's sunshine blazed awake, they shouted, reveling. Through all the frosty ages, you can hear them echoing behind us, listen. All the long echoes sing the same delight. This shortest day, as promise awakens in the sleeping land, they carol, feast, and give thanks. And dearly love their friends and hope for peace. And so do we here, now, this year and every year. Welcome, Yule. And so this is an opportunity to go within to that place, that, that stillness, and reflect. And know that while the winter is upon us, there is life happening. There is germination. There is life preparing to spring forth. As our seasons show us, life is in perpetual motion, that there is a promise and every season is an opportunity to go within, to plant new seeds, to set new intentions. So as the light returns, we grow with that intention. We grow in love. We grow in unity. And I wanted to end with a prayer. It's uh, prayers for a planetary pilgrim. This is just an excerpt from it. As we emerge from the darkness, may we find hope in the lights we have kindled on this sacred night, hope in one another and in all who form the webwork of peace and justice that spans the world. In the heart of every person on this earth burns the spark of luminous goodness. In no heart is there total darkness. May we who have celebrated this winter solstice by our lives and service, by our prayers and love, call forth from one another the light and the love that is hidden in every heart. Amen. Mm, that is beautiful. Thank you, Christy. You know, when I was thinking about the winter solstice, I, my mind kind of went to a funny place. It wasn't funny at the time, but... The first time I ever spent the night all by myself in a house alone, I was 18 years old. And, um, you know, I had some apprehension, but I was 18. I was a young adult. Everything was going to be fine. So I went to sleep that night. And then in the middle of the night, boom, this noise. I just knew someone was coming into the house and that, oh, my God, that was going to be end of me. My door was already closed, and so I quietly got up, and I locked it, and then I jumped back in bed and put the covers <laughs> over me. It, I believe, was the longest night of my life. I just, my heart was pounding. I was terrified. I just knew, you know, somebody was going to come bursting through my door any moment. I was sweating under the, under the covers. 
finally, I had never been happier to see daylight. And when I, daylight was finally, I felt safe. I opened that door and a picture in my uh, living room outside the bedroom, a picture had fallen off the wall that night, first night I stayed by myself. But I've reflected on that many times throughout my life that, you know, in many ways we're afraid of the dark. We're afraid of the unknown. Our ancestors referred to it as terra incognito, that unknown territory or the darkness. And so for me, the winter solstice, I'm now at a point in my life that I love the dark. I love thunderstorms. I love quiet and I love alone time and I love time with people and daylight and all those other things too but to me winter solstice is a is a time and an evening to lean into the times that we've been afraid of the dark whatever that's looked like for you and to hold yourself with love and to hold yourself with compassion to reflect on how you have grown and to know that any overcoming is evidence of continual overcoming and so tonight, the three of us, and with Richard, we'd like to wish you just a beautiful evening of winter solstice. Please go outside, look up at the sky, and find those beautiful planets next to each other, just beaming forth, a uh, creating an energetic breakthrough for the new and improved. So let's stay tuned, and I look forward to seeing you soon. We hope you'll tune in on live stream on the 23rd for Blue Christmas service, and then on the 27th, we'll have our Sunday service, and then on next next Thursday, we'll have New Year's Eve, so a lot of wonderful things lined up, but I want to thank you, my friends. Enjoy this beautiful winter solstice evening.